Hi everyone, today I'm going to be dedicating this video to Lightroom and Lightroom only. So I'm going to try and demystify some of the ways that Lightroom kind of works and sorts files and what exactly is happening to your files. Uh, I see a lot of people that kind of get confused or that are not sure exactly what's happening when you import files, uh, when you apply settings to them, when you develop the photo. So I'm going to kind of explain uh, how this works. This video is going to be in two parts. So the first part, which I'm going to put on my YouTube channel, uh, Free For Everyone, is really going to deal with organizing photos and importing photos and how the whole folder system works within Lightroom. Uh, so you have this whole collections type of folder versus the actual folders on your hard drive. I'm going to explain that to you a bit. Uh, I'll also touch on a bit of how uh, I organize my photos personally. So if you find this is a good system for yourself, go right ahead and use the same system. If you're already using a different system, that's fine as well. There's so many ways that Lightroom has uh, different options so you can organize photos. So I'm going to touch on a bit on how I do it, but feel free to do it any way that you would want uh, for yourself. On the second part of the video uh, that it's going to be available on my website, I'm really going to touch more on the whole develop module and how I uh, develop my photos and the settings and what all these uh, settings actually do. These little tools, tools at the top and every single slider and tool that you have within the uh, develop module. Uh, I'll explain them and then I'll actually s show you what I tend to use uh, for my own photos. So let's start from the beginning here. I actually took a few photos uh, this morning just so I would have a few photos to import into Lightroom now. These photos are just random snapshots that I've taken of the uh, my studio part. So nothing important, but I just want to have a few files that I could import from the beginning to kind of show you what's going on. Now Lightroom has methods that you can import from a SD card or whichever card you're using and import your files. What I do is I always physically go to the card myself within the, the folders of the computer. I copy these photos photos over to a hard drive. So at this point I still know I'm very for, very sure that I'll still have all the files on the SD card or CF card, whichever card you have, and I'll copy them over to my hard drive. I tend to do this onto an SSD drive, which is a faster drive. So the whole process will be a bit faster once they are on that drive. I'm just going to call this, I'll, I'll actually name it the way I usually do things. So one way that I organize my photos is right from the beginning from the folders on the computer. Uh, I always put the date first, which means that the folder, the photos and folder, folders will always be in the correct timeline order. Uh, I'll just put tests here for the photos. Now I'm going to have a real copy of the photos onto this D drive, which is my SSD drive, and they are still on the actual uh, camera card as well. The reason I do this is if ever I had some bad luck or until I deliver the photos to the actual client, I always try to keep the copy on the uh, external card as well. So if something goes bad with the hard drive, which has happened to me before, uh, I'll still have that second copy of the photos available. Now the photos are actually on the hard drive. So let me go to this folder. From this point, what I do to, to import them, I usually just go into Open With and Open With Lightroom. Now I know that you can go into Lightroom and import them, that's fine. This will simply, usually Lightroom is not running, so it'll simply open up this import dialog. So I don't need to open Lightroom myself, and it's just faster, it comes to the same thing. At this point, I'm going to check all. So Lightroom will only import, uh, or virtually import, I'll get back into this for a second, the ones that you choose. So for some reason, if you only wanted the first two, you could check those first two and only import those. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to do check all, which is usually what I do with my photo shoots. Uh, you also have a whole lot of settings that you can uh, apply when you're importing. You can say, well, I want 
these settings to be applied. I want this information to be applied. Um, I don't do this. I don't do, if I were doing a lot of uh, journalism, our um, photos that would need to be tagged, for example, uh, I could see how this would be very important to use or very useful. And the, the type of photos that I do, I don't really use it. Uh, the whole importing settings on the uh, photos when they come in, I don't do either because I rarely have a setting for the entire shoot. Uh, so I just import them without really touching on anything else. Uh, so what I do here is click import. Now what this does, it will add the photos into Lightroom so I can actually see them. So if you go on to the left side here, so make sure you're in the library section, you will see uh, somewhat of a breakdown of the hard drives. If you've, It'll only show you areas that you've imported photos from. So don't panic if you see no hard drives or you see no information or very little information within it. So if I open this, there's hardly anything there. That's because I don't import anything from that drive. So you can see that the, folder, the photos that I just imported are in this folder, the same way that it, they are on the hard disk. So this is exactly where the photos are within the hard drive of the computer. So at this point, if I choose this photo and I say remove photo, it will give me the option to just remove it within Lightroom so it won't delete it from the disk. Or I can really say delete it from the disk completely. So not only will it remove it from Lightroom, it will actually delete it from the hard drive where I just copied it. So only do this if you're very sure that this photo you want to get rid of. Now this is only an option that you will see within library and if you're actually underneath the folder section. If you go, I'm going to explain the whole um, collections folders in a second, but just as a quick uh, example, if I go into one of these, let's say here for example, if I choose that same thing and say remove from collection, that will only remove the virtual fo fo photo. <laughs> I have trouble with this folder and photo. Okay, it'll only remove the actual virtual photo. Uh, it didn't remove it from the hard drive at all. So I'm just going to undo that so it comes back to normal. So from the actual hard drive section, so the actual drive letter and folders, you can actually delete the actual photo. If you do it from the uh, virtual folders, from the uh, collections, it'll only get rid of the virtual photo, not of the actual file. These are the photos that I just imported. When you actually start working on these photos in the develop module, keep in mind that all you are doing is applying settings within Lightroom. The actual raw file is not being edited at all. So let me just run that by you again. So if I start, if I go into the develop module, and start changing the exposure, changing the shadows, and doing whatever to this photo. Uh, if I bump up the colors, it doesn't matter what I do. All I'm doing is changing settings within Lightroom. So the raw file is not being changed at all. Lightroom is knows where this raw file is. It's showing me a preview of the raw file with the settings that I'm changing which is one of the strengths of Lightroom because I can create a virtual copy of this fo photo if I want and as many as I want. It's not going to take up any more room. I'm not creating a copy of the actual file. I'm just creating a virtual copy of settings. Why would you want to do this? Well, one example is if you want to create different looks to the same photo. Maybe you're not sure in what direction you want to take the photo. Uh, you could create a whole different set of settings for that photo. You're not creating three copies of the photo on your hard drive. You're simply creating three different settings uh, for that raw file. So that is one strength of being able to work within these virtual copies of Lightroom. So let me just back up for a second. I'll go back into library. So at this point, I've imported my photos. Uh, I have them here. Let me just get rid of the virtual copies that I created. So I go back to the original 
the original three photos that I had imported. At this point, what I do is I create a collections folder. Now, collection folders are simply put virtual folders of uh, your raw files, or you could have JPEGs as well, but I, I work always in raw files. So what this does, it allows you to organize them into different folders, and you can create different subfolders. For example, if you choose photos that you like, you can put them in one folder and the client chooses different folders, they could be in a different folder. There's all sorts of ways that this could be used usefully. The way that I use it, I tend to import the entire photo shoot at first. So if I scroll down uh, to some more recent photo shoots. So I'll import the entire photo shoot at first. So for example here, I have near 700 photos in that full shoot. So I imported that full shoot. The second folder that I create is first picks, which is for me, simply the first chosen pictures from that entire shoot. From there, I might do a second uh, culling of the images and bring it down even more. Later on, what I'll do, once the client has the photos and we're sure that everything is on point and we have everything we want, I'll come back. Usually, I'll grab the from the first pics or the second pics and I'll delete, I'll really physically delete all the other raw files that I don't need. Because you can see here that I've brought it down to somewhat of a 64 images uh, down from 677. Now that's a huge difference. So um, some people just kind of keep all their raw files and back them up no matter what. What I do is I usually normally after six months a year, uh, I'll delete everything that wasn't that didn't make the actual cut of the, the chosen photos. So that's going to save a whole lot of space eventually. I do save the all the raw files of the chosen photos though, because I still want to have the absolute most quality of the photo. So if I want to come back to it uh, in five, ten years from now, uh, the actual file is still there. I create JPEGs to send online or to the client if they want a small folder a small photo, but I always keep the raw file and I will also keep the fully edited TIFF file uh, full size on my hard drive as well. What I do get rid of eventually is all the fluff, all the uh, raw files that weren't chosen, especially if, for example, that I brought down from this 217, uh, I might get rid of the the excess 300, 400 images that I didn't really choose anyway. I'm still left with 200 and something, which is more than enough. And that's just going to get rid of the fluff that I don't actually need. A lot of those photos could be test shots or simply, you know, photos that we didn't want anyway. So just get rid of those. So the way that you do this is you create these virtual folders up here. So where it says collections, there's a little plus. Uh, so at first I create a collection set. Collection set is kind of the root, the, the, the main folder in which you're going to create the smaller folders. So collection set is the first folder that you see here with that little rectangle inside of it. So within that collection set, I'm going to create collections. So this is a little confusing. I know most people kind of get confused as to what's going on here. So collection set is the main root folder that I create. And within that folder of the collection set, I'll create collections. You can even create smart collections, it'll, choosing different factors of the folder, uh, photos, uh, any of the, the camera settings or any of the, uh, the labels or tags that you've put on it can be used here. I seldom use this at all. I go on collection sets and collections. So collection set being that main folder, Collections being all the little folders underneath of that main folder. That's just how I organize things. And you can also see that I still use the same method of using the dates, uh, the, day, the year, the month, the day, and then the name of the person. Uh, by the way, the names are mostly going to be blurred out because a lot of these names I don't want to pop up publicly. But that's just kind of how I sort the images. It's just easier to, to get everything done. So. I'll do an example here. I've already created 
a uh, folder for the, these pictures that I've done today. So I've created a collection set. Underneath, I've created two collections, one that's called full shoot, one that's called full uh, first picks. So if I grab these three photos and drag them into this new folder here, so full shoot, now I have my virtual collection with these folders, these uh, pictures in the folder. It's not creating an actual copy of the photo on the hard drive. It's not taking up space. It's not creating different copies of that raw file. It's simply creating a virtual copy of it. Now, why would I want to do this is that I can create virtual copies once again. I can sort them different ways. I can put different photos in different folders. Uh, if you had a photo shoot, for example, that was one part studio, one part outside, you could separate them into outside and inside. Uh, really, it's just a way to organize your images. Now, within Lightroom, there is a whole bunch of tools and methods that you can organize your photos with to, to go through and start culling your images. So I'm going to talk about how I tend to uh, organize my photos, but f obviously feel free to do any method that you want. Uh, I'm just going to show you what I've kind of come down to and the way that I do it. I'm going to give you an example of one of the shoots that I've done rather recently. Uh, here I have a folder with the entire shoot. So 677 folder, uh, photos. From here, usually what I do, either with the client or just by myself, I'll choose, I'll do a first calling and get rid of all the photos that are not really going to be worked on or chosen from anyway. Within Lightroom, you have a whole lot of methods to do so. You have a flagging method, which is you can flag a photo, you can reject it, you have a rating system, a five star rating system, so it can have one star up to five star. And you also have color labels, so you can put different colors onto the, the uh, actual pictures to identify them. All this is simply methods to identify, call your images and kind of get a method of to know how you can separate them and organize your images. I'll tell you how I kind of do things, but you could use these tools whichever way that you would want. At first, I use the flag system. So I'll go to the images, simply flag the ones that I want to move on to the next folder and keep. So I'm going to show you how I tend to organize my photos from a full photo shoot down to the few f pictures that I'm going to edit uh, towards the end. So right now I'm in the entire folder with all the photos from the photo shoot. Uh, I can scroll through them, I can see thumbnails of them. One nice method within Lightroom is to be able to preview images larger and to select them and to be able to tag them any way I would want. So what I've done is I've created a method to see the, fo the photos as large as I can but still having a good number of photos on the screen. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all these menus on the side. So the shortcut within Lightroom to do that is shift tab, which will completely get rid of all the menus around the uh, the thumbnails that I see right now. So if I want to bring it back, I just hit shift tab again and all the menus come back. So for now, I'm just going to take them away. Uh, I have exactly 10 photos per row right now. The reason for that is that I found that it's a nice method to kind of call through my images uh, by using the end shortcut, which will give me a preview of the photos. Uh, this is how I choose my photos. I don't go through them one by one. Uh, you can look it up. Some people go one by one and choose and choose and not choose. I don't do that because when you go from one large photo to the next, you have somewhat of an image retention from one photo to the next. And it can really affect uh, how you're choosing your photos. So the method of being able to see them all on the screen or at least a batch at once makes it faster to kind of see which ones stick out to you. Uh, if you go through them one by one, uh, you also don't know what's coming up or if there's a better one right beside it. So you might choose a photo and then the next one is actually a little bit better. So this is just a method to be able to see a batch of photos and to choose them from that point instead of going one by one. The reason why I chose 10 is that if I chose too many images, 
they become too small and I can't really see them right. So you can kind of work with a method that you find works best for you. It could be five, it could be any. So just kind of get a feel as to how many images work best for you. I choose 10, kind of works for me. I've been using it for a while. So at this point, what I do is the same method as if I would be alone or with the client. I'll go through the images either myself or with the client and just flag the ones that stick out to us. So what I mean by that is adding that little flag method. So I right click, you can see that this one is flagged. So the shortcut to flag a photo is P. So if I'm going to the photos, let's say I flag this one, I flag it, this one here. Uh, I'll go to the next line and just really quickly go through a batch of 10 photos and only choose the ones that stick out um, and go through the whole thing like that. If I see a whole batch that you know, I don't want, then I, I won't do this. I'll just skip over them. But this is one method that I use. Uh, you can do this with the whole star system. You can use the color method. Uh, any of these methods will work. It's simply a way to differentiate the photos that you want to move on with versus the ones that you want to set aside. So I use the flagging system at first. Once you've done the entire folder, and you have a pretty good idea. Let me just grab a few more here. Uh, so for example, if I grab this one, let's say I want to keep this, I want to keep this, I want to keep this. I'm just grabbing random ones at this point. And now I have a few photos flagged. I'll bring back all the menus. So shift tab. Right down here, I have a filtering system. So I can choose to only see the images that I flagged. So right now, the only photos that I see and obviously the ones that I had flagged previously uh, are the photos that are flagged. So what this allows me to do is I could create uh, a folder, for example, what I've actually done here, and then only copy over the folder photos that I've just flagged. So I keep making my selection smaller and smaller. I can also create a folder that would be only the selection of the clients. So simply methods to uh, call through your images and choose, break it down to the ones you want to keep. So all the while I'm doing this, all the raw files are still on the hard drive. I'm not deleting or changing anything by flagging them or not choosing them. I'm simply choosing images to be able to sort them out. So once again, this is the method I used to break it down from 600 plus photos to 200 and then down to 64. Um, I'm just going to get into real quick how uh, I use the different methods for different reasons. So the flagging system that I just used, uh, I will always use it. Let me just come back to the folder. I will always use this method at first. So I just kind of flag photos and choose them. Uh, you see some of them have five stars. The starring system, I kind of dedicate to uh, photos that the client have chosen themselves. So already I know that this photo was flagged by me and it was also chosen by the client. You quite often this will be done uh, from an offsite, let's say like a pixie set, for example. Uh, they will choose the photos from there. I can just import their, ch their choices and then star everything that they chosen. By the way, pixie set works really great with Lightroom because it has a method that Clients can simply click like on images and you can import a list into Lightroom. It's made for it and you will only see the images that that client chose. So you can star them, you can flag them any way you choose. It's just really quick. You don't have to go the, through the whole method of, uh, oh, I like this photo with a screenshot or I like this photo with the number and you have to search for it. Uh, it's just a really quick method of doing it. So. I either sit with the client in person right after the shoot in front of my computer and choose the photos, or I'll send them off to them with Pixie Set and I'll import that list that they've created and star off the images that they've chosen. So I use the flagging method for myself, the star method for the clients, and then I'm left with the color labels. Personally, I use them to really make the photos that I want to do first pop out. So for example, within all the photos that I've chosen here with the flags or the stars or regardless, uh, I have a method that if I put it in blue, for example, I know it's an image that I want to edit and have it myself on my social media or 
or wherever else. Uh, so just methods to kind of sort through your photos. That is one of the main reasons that I'm still using Lightroom. I actually really like uh, other programs like uh, Capture One, for example. Uh, but the thing is, is that I'm so used to organizing everything within Lightroom and creating the folders that if I don't use this system, it just slows me down so much. Uh, maybe at some point I'll change. But for now, that's why I'm kind of using this system still. It just makes it easier for myself. So to recap real quick, uh, the whole collection system is simply virtual folders in which you can create, if you will, virtual copies of your photos. So most often the raw files. And from there, you can just kind of create different folders uh, just so you can kind of call through your images, choose the ones you want to edit. It makes it easier to kind of figure out, okay, what am I going to do with these photos? Uh, and usually at the very end, what I do, I only keep the best ones. So I'll go back later on uh, and delete all the pictures that I don't want. The way that I do it, uh, and I don't, I'm just going to explain it, what I do, uh, so be careful when you start deleting photos. Uh, be sure of what you're doing. But what I do is I tend to unflag absolutely everything, go into the folder of the ones that I want to keep, flag them, go back into the actual folder of everything, and delete everything that wasn't flagged. And remember that if you want to actually delete, physically delete the, fol the uh, pictures from your hard drive, you can't do that from the actual virtual folders you want to be in the actual hard drive folder, which is just above. I know it's a little confusing. Uh, it takes a bit of getting used to. I get a lot of questions as to, okay, how does this work? This I can't find my photo, my photos. Where are they? What's happening? Uh, so you actually have the real folders of your computer versus virtual copies. Now I can delete the pictures from my hard drive completely. I might still see the, the virtual copies, they might actually even show up as thumbnails, but I won't have access to the actual file if they were deleted completely. It's just going to tell me that that file cannot be found. Uh, so be careful when you start doing your, your images. Um, just going to create one last little example that I get questions of quite often. Uh, and it's something that I do often as well, and you kind of have to know how to deal with it within Lightroom, is if you want to move your, fo your photos or your folders once you've imported them into Lightroom. Now the problem is, is that if I import pictures from that dr the D drive that I was previously, for example, and I do all my editing, I do all my calling, I choose all the pictures that I want, and then let's say one month from now, I grab that folder from my hard drive physically, not within Lightroom, and I just kind of say, okay, I'm going to move these pictures to a different drive to back them up. Well, the problem is that when I go back into Lightroom now, and I go into those folders, uh, I'm still going to see the thumbnail, but it's going to tell me that the file cannot be located. It's it completely lost where that file was. Now, that may not mean that you've lost the file. It may just mean that you've moved it to a different drive. So I'm going to give you an example of what can be done and what I do. So if I go back to these uh, three pictures that I brought in. So right now I have the virtual folder within the collections and I also have the physical folder of these pictures here where it's called test. So let me give you the example if I were to actually move uh, these folders, these pictures somewhere else. So Let's say a month from now, I decide, okay, this, these pictures are fine. I'm done editing them. Uh, let me just move them. I'll cut this from here and copy them to a different drive. I'm just going to create another folder for now for the sake of not creating folders everywhere. I'm just going to call this uh, a weird name uh, test here. And I'm going to copy, move, actually not copy, but move these fold, the folder and files into here. So it's no longer where it used to be. So if I go back into Lightroom, everything looks fine. I still see the thumbnails. Uh, the, the folder is still here, although you can see that there's a little question mark and it's grayed out. And if I go to my collections, everything still looks fine. The folders are there. I still see three pictures and they still show up here. Because Lightroom was just open, it's still going to show me the preview uh, quite large. It's going to be good. 
you're going to see that the quality is bad because I'm only seeing the preview at this point. Um, so what's happening is that I don't actually have the real file underneath it anymore. It's just showing me previews of what Lightroom created. It actually has no idea where these files are anymore. So if you notice at the bottom here, let me just pull it up here. You might see it better. You'll notice that in the top right corner, there's a little exclamation mark and it says photo is missing. That doesn't mean that the photo is completely gone or deleted. It just means that Lightroom has no idea where that photo is at this point. So if you do know where they are, you can simply click on this little exclamation mark and you can see that it says, okay, this file cannot be found. Where is it? You just pay attention to what file you're looking for. So 3422 and you click locate and you can just simply point it to where those files are. So in this case, I've simply created a different folder. I know where they are, they're underneath here. So I'll tell it, okay, this is the file. From this point on, you'll see all the exclamation marks are gone. And Lightroom now knows where these photos are once again, and everything is fine. So kind of uh, emergency avoided. What I do quite often, I honestly do move the folders uh, physically myself, like I just did. Uh, quite often because I'll create different folders underneath and I want to make sure absolutely everything is moving with me. Uh, so I always tend to do what I've just done right now is to uh, physically move the folder to a different drive. The problem is that Lightroom gets lost. I just kind of have to tell it again, okay, where these folders are. Because I use that whole date system and things are kind of really well organized on my hard drive, it's usually not a problem to find them again but I can see how this creates panic in a lot of people quite often. So you'll move the photos and then you come into Lightroom and then all of a sudden Lightroom is telling you that the photos are gone. Um, so this is what you want to do. The other method is if you want to move them with a Lightroom or you just want to make sure that you don't have to go through what I've just done now, is you can go into the hard drive section at the top here. Uh, so make sure you're not doing this with the collections. You want to do this within the actual folders of the hard drive. So I can grab this folder and drag it into this section, for example. At this point, Lightroom will physically move all the folders uh, that you've grabbed and the files, and you'll see an actual copy. It, you'll, it takes quite a bit of time usually within the raw files. Uh, so it will copy them, it will move the folder and Lightroom will keep track of, okay, where the new location is. Uh, the reason why I tend to still move them by hand is that a couple of times previously, uh, within that folder, I had other, st I had other stuff. It could have been uh, behind the scene videos or whatever, and they didn't follow through within Lightroom. Now, this could have been a mistake on my part. Uh, maybe Lightroom has fixed this throughout the, all the updates. This was a long time ago but I still stick with the method of physically moving the folders myself. It just kind of get, reassures me that when I do grab the folder, that absolutely everything within that folder is moving along with me and not just what Lightroom sees fit to move. That's the reason why. So that kind of covers a bit of the whole uh, organizing pictures within Lightroom, uh, the whole flagging method, the colors, the uh, rating system, um, the one last thing I'm going to cover in this section is uh, when you want to export your files. So, so far I've said that we're only dealing with virtual copies and uh, it, Lightroom is basically just saving the settings that you've applied to the, uh, the raw file. Um, when you actually go into export, this is where you're going to apply and create an actual file for that photo. So when I go into the export dialog, for example, uh, I can tell it uh, where I want to save these files. If I want to create another folder, I can rename it if I want. Uh, I can choose what uh, type of file I want to create. If I want to do a JPEG, a TIFF, uh, or keep it as the original. Uh, you can choose the size, the quality, the, the, uh, the size of the image. Uh, you can see mine is pretty much set to 2048, which is the size for most social media. Uh, I, on, I honestly never export from Lightroom for social media anyway, but the uh, previews that I send to people, clients on Pixie Set, for example, uh, I usually export everything to 2048 as well. So that's why it's just kind of defaulting at that size. 
And you can also do like a watermark and everything. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, I honestly don't even watermark my images. So you can play with that if you want. But when you export a file from here, that is the only point you're going to create a physical new file with the settings that you've just added. Uh, so either it be JPEG or whatever, the raw file within Lightroom is still untouched. It's still on your hard drive. Nothing has happened to it. Lightroom is simply showing you different settings parameters that you've done to it. And at this point, you can export and save it to a file. So that's pretty much it for this section. If you have any questions on how to organize the, the photos or how I organize the photos, uh, feel free to write me. I'm going to move on now to the entire develop module and uh, really dig in deeper into how I start uh, developing my images from the raw file within Lightroom. So you're going to see uh, the methods that I use uh, to really get my photo looking as best as I can before I send it off into Photoshop.